Hello and welcome to the Tarka Zone. Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to be playing the game Riven World and I'm going to be doing this video on basic building. So what I've done is I've gone uh, and ran around the map a little bit and I see this flat spot. So when you enter Riven World, you're going to need to make yourself an axe to get going. And this is a pretty flat place right here. So this is where I'm going to do this video. So once you acquire an axe, and how you acquire the axe is you've got to work, build this workbench. Now I've already got one in my inventory that I made, but it only takes, uh, oh well, you got to first make the stone axe, which is going to take you uh, five uh, sticks and uh, two stone. And how you get the sticks is just forage a tree, and if you want to get stone, you want to forage on the stone fascias. And you'll be able to get it and then you just forage the trees you get the sticks you'll make the axe then with the axe you get the logs and then with the logs you build yourself your first workbench so again i've already built a workbench i'm going to put that down i'm just going to lay it here you can put your workbench anywhere on the ground if the land is not claimed so we're going to first claim this land so that no one can um claim it because if you build a uh, building here and it's not claimed, someone can drop a claim down and now they own your building. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make some claims. Now I went and got some ore, uh, gold ore, because there's gold nodes and some stones. And I got the pickaxe by making the mason table. Let's make a mason table too. I didn't bring one with me. So that's, that's going to uh, start crafting here. I didn't bring one with me. I should have, but we'll craft one. And then we'll craft some claims. What's the maximum amount of claims? I don't need 10 claims for this video. I'm going to do four claims uh, just uh, for this video so that we can claim a little bit of land, do a quick building, uh, and, then, uh, and then we'll cap the video. And I'll just show you some tips and tricks on how I go about building in this game. This is going to be really basic. All right. So this uh, table's almost finished. Now, under the workbench, you can see the things that you can build under the workbench. For building, you've got to decide when you go to build your first structure, do you want to build it out of wood? Do you want to build it out of dirt bricks? Uh, uh, do you want to build it out of thatch? Uh, what I find that uh, it's just easier to get wood in this game. It's very plentiful. So that workbench is finished. I'm going to drag it in my inventory. Uh, wood's pretty pr plentiful in this uh version of the game thatch not so much there's a lot of foraging to get thatch and then stone is not that bad to get but for this video we're going to do wood because wood's easy to get there's not a lot of stones around here uh to to you know get stone i guess i could just uh forge those fascias i mean you can get a lot of stone just foraging for it i mean you don't even have to go to a node so let's go to the table i already cut some logs or cut some trees to get some logs. I'm going to get a wooden block. I'm going to say maximum. I can make 10 of those right now. So that table's making that. So in my inventory, I've got stone, iron. I'm going to go to the stone bench just to show you how. I've got stone in my inventory. Just go to the, the mason bench and go to stone block and then hit max. And I can make 25 of those. So I will use those blocks too because I've got them, right? So let's just go cut some, those guys, those uh, benches are going to uh, make those items while we're away from them. Go up to your trees, just smack your trees. The big trees, I believe, give 124 logs. So you can get quite a bit of logs out of these trees. And the game requires you to actually click. You just can't hold it down because it just doesn't work that way. You've actually got to hit the tree now i can forage this tree even after i've hit it a few times and i got some leaves and i got some sticks from it so it may not hurt when you go to do your if i forage again i think i won't get anything because of the way the foraging system works it's one and done see i'm not getting anything from reforaging it so it won't hurt when you go to uh, hit your trees down hit the foraging button once it doesn't take away from the amount of logs that you get so just hit the trees. I've got the uh, the 
the basic axe. I'm doing this video with the basic axe, with the basic equipment. In uh, in your journeys here in in Riven World, you'll uh, get better equipment, and that will allow you to dock this tree down quicker. So you'll get the the tier two axe, tier three uh, lumber axe, and then you'll be able to knock these uh, trees down. Look at these split. You get them quicker. Plus, the game's going to have some uh, leveling, too, when it comes to uh, woodcutting. So in the future, you'll, uh, you'll get experience for cutting trees down. So you'll be able to knock one of these entire trees down. I'm not saying you do probably do it in 10 swings, but you will have the ability with the, to increase your lumbering skills. And then having the Tier 3 axe, the highest level axe, with the lumbering skills up there, you could probably start just clear cutting. You can see how long this takes to get lumber uh, or the, the wooden logs this early in the game. I mean, I'm here hitting this tree for a very long time. And there it goes. So we'll go back to the benches and we'll queue up some more wooden blocks. Now, when I um, look at this bench, there's a few options it gives me for wood. And we should go over those options. You got the half block. We'll make, I'll make, I'll make a full, a full I'll actually make 10 of those. I'm going to make 10 uh, of the half blocks. Because those just take, um, half blocks is two wood for those. Two lumber or two logs. The wooden blocks take four. And then you've got these triangle blocks. I'm going to make, I'm going to make, probably 10 of those so that you'll be able to see what those are. So I'm going to hit craft and then I can make stairs. I'll make 10 stairs. I'll hit craft and then I've got the ramp. Now I don't use the ramp all that often. I'm not going to really show you the ramp. I mean, it's good to use, but I like using the stairs, I, but the ramps are good to use too. They're just like the stairs, but they're just flat instead of stairs uh, so these are what we're going to make now you'll see that we've got other options that we could make but you need four wooden blocks you to get into these uh to build these tier two components i would call it because these here that are in white are tier one meaning that you're just moving logs to making these these require you to actually use the blocks to make them so you need four, in this case you need two blocks, and in this case you need four blocks to make, make this next one. Uh, the thick brick, you need, well that's thatch. So this, yeah, these are the thatch components. So this, if you want to make out of thatch for role playing purposes or for deco, you can still do that. So that's the wooden components right there. And with this video, we're only going to be looking at the blocks that I'm making now. Now I'm going to go back to the wooden block, I'm going to hit max. I'm going to hit craft on that. Uh, I actually might have to leave the bench and go back into the bench to get the right number on that. So hit max. It's 32. Hit craft. All right. So in the hopper, this is, this is what we've got. We've got the land claims we created. We've got the half blocks. Uh, we got the triangles. I know I'm running out of inventory here. And we have this. Now, you, at any time, you can use the bench to hold stuff. I'll have it hold the uh, little planks there. So here we are. Okay, the sun's setting. So we're going to do a little bit of building here in the dark. So the wooden blocks are down there in the six key, the hot key. So here you can see I can build it anywhere in the world. Anywhere I want. And before we do that, we are going to put the land claims down. I'll drag those down here. I don't need this in that slot anymore. I'll to put the half blocks down here for now. Oh, and this is very important. This is, if you don't uh, remember anything else from this video, remember this. Go to this uh, bench, the workbench, and make a hammer. And it, it's important that you make a hammer. Now, I think um, I, used up, I used up all the, my, my stone. So make, I was going to try to grab some stone out of there if I could. You want to build this hammer. This is your special deletion hammer 
that if you make a mistake in your building, you can just remove the item for full cost. So it doesn't cost you anything to remove a block or anything you've put down. It's it's a it's a hundred percent regain of the object. But while you're building, you'll make mistakes. So you want to make sure that you make one of these. It only takes uh, six stone and four sticks. And I have that in my in my three slot. It's always there. And what's nice is if you ever get trapped in your own wall while you're building, sometimes that happens, you can just delete the wall with the hammer. But the problem being is if you don't have the hammer and you get caught in a wall right now, the game doesn't have an unstuck feature. So you'd be very cautious about getting stuck in walls. Uh, and probably just keep a hammer with you. That's why I say the hammer right now is pretty important to you. Let's say you make no mistakes at all. You never need to delete a block. But there'll be a place where you'll get clipped into the wall and you won't be able to get out and you'll have to use the hammer to free yourself. And then you just replace the blocks that you deleted. And we'll go over that right now in the video. So we're going to go to the, uh, the six there where I've got those wooden blocks. And what you got to do is use the left mouse button and you just hold it down. So if I just tap it once, the block doesn't get placed. You got to hold down the... Uh, the mouse button for it to place the block. All right, so I just used all those blocks that we created. I might as well use the stone blocks because we have them. Again, you need stone in the mace and you need to make the in them in the masonry table. What's nice about stone, it's obviously gonna have more hit points than the wood. So if you make your building, and it's a different color too, it looks different. And if you make your building out of uh, stone, it's gonna be more durable than the wood. Now, the other thing you can do with the assets or the blocks is you can use the middle mouse button to rotate them. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put line it back up to the normal and I'm gonna just turn it one click, okay? I just clicked it one click and I'm gonna place it with one, with, well, let's line it back up. Place it with one click over, and I'm just going to place it. Then I'm going to line the next one up. It remains in the one-click position. All future blocks that you do will be in the one. See what I've done here? I've now, whoop, uh, there's a mistake I just made. We'll go and get it with a hammer. I've made it so that by doing one click, this will eventually be a circle. And then I can just build a circle tower if that's what I want to do. But you could go two clicks if you want, and it just be a, it just it just ends up being it just ends up being a tighter, a tighter a tighter circle. So you can do that in this game. You can make circles depending on how many clicks you turn the block, and then the the future blocks that you place there will will line up at that angle. So you can do circles. So now I'm going to go to my hammer. And I'm going to just highlight the block that I put here that I didn't need. I'm going to get rid of all these blocks with uh, my destruction hammer there, the, the hammer that I built. And I'm getting 100% of the costs back. So this didn't cost me anything to show you how you make circles in this game. It, it's really, and then, the, and then you just pick it up like that. So let's look at claiming. So number five, it's under the five key, that's where the claim nodes were placed. You'll see that this uh, is in green. That means it's claimable. That means that Tarkis can take this piece of land and own it. And what I'm going to do is place it right here in the corner. Because I'm going to show you, because that's why I made four of these. So I now own this. That's why it's in red, is I can't place a second claim down because I already own it. And if I place a claim here, now I own this one. So now I own both those pieces of property. And then I'm going to place this claim down. I own this property. And then I own this property. So now I own this big square piece of land. And in the future, what's going to happen is these items here, these claim uh, shrines will be able to be destroyed. So if a person comes to this plot and destroys one of these, this land becomes green again for somebody to claim it if they want. 
So the key is in the future, you're going to want to protect these things. Now, what's nice about the system is you can use the hammer on them to pick them up, to get them back to your inventory. But when you do that, keep in mind that when you do that, it's available again to be claimed. Like these are claimed still. But once I pulled that off that property, this is now free to be claimed by anybody. I tell you this because what's going to be nice for you in the future, let's say I normally what I, you would do is build your structure here. It, you know, you start your structure around these nodes and my square structure or my circle structure would be in protecting these four nodes if I want to keep the land. Let's say, let's say I didn't want to have to protect all that and I just wanted one piece, uh, then I could just uh, pull them. Let's say I just, uh, like Tarkas, I just want to ma manage one piece of land. I don't have to protect four shrines. Well, the concept is, is, is going to be the same, is you would just place the, uh, it's under five, you just place the shrine any way you want. Let's say you say, I just want one piece of land, I'll be fine with that. And you'd place it wherever you want, and then from here I'd protect it. But what's nice about it is if I build a tower or if I build four stories high, I can pick this up and bring it to the fourth story if that's what I want to do. So I can protect it better on the fourth story. So you just remember, or you can leave it here on the ground and build a defense around it. But what's nice is, well, the problem being is if somebody zergs you, and they just start beating your foundation until they finally find it. Because once they, de once they de destroy it, the property becomes claimable by them. So your raiders can actually steal your property from you. So you want to protect it. So you probably want to hide it somewhere. Make your building big enough in this area in a few stories where, the, the, you know, and just hide it somewhere. And what's also nice about it is, if I hit the six button and put the bricks back in, you can cover it up say that so somewhere in your building you can just bury it in a wall so that they will never find it so I can't put anything there because the the shrine is blocking me and you and the thing about building is you only can jump one block up so if you go more than two blocks high you won't be able to so there, there you go. So basically, in your building somewhere, you just tuck it away random somewhere within the square, and this way they can't find it, or or you can move it occasionally if it ends up getting found, or and they don't claim it, and they leave it alone. Uh, it just allows you to secure, secure your property better by doing it this way. Uh, with the four shrine you got to protect all four of them if you don't want to lose portions of your land. So with the four in mind, you would lift those up to another floor too. I mean, just to think about it is the more land you claim, the harder it will be to defend the, the individual shrines to protect it. But also keep in mind that the upkeep cost, I'm going to go back to my hammer, the upkeep cost to land management here, I'm going to go over that real quick because it's part of the basic building. Uh, when you go up to the claim, now you and you want to put the claim in a place where you can get to it too, because you need to manage it. Go to E when you get up to it. Here is what it's telling you: your claim, my land claim shrine has a hundred credits towards it, and that means um, it's it's saying that my uh, the tax rate of this kingdom is sixty percent. It's the highest percentage in the kingdom. And so what happens is, is over time, the kingdom charges you taxes at the 60% value. And in this game, they call it fuel. But what's nice about it is you can shove anything. What's this? What is this? Iron ore? I can put anything in there and it gives me credit towards the fuel. So, so I can go to the iron ore and stuff it. See how much the iron ore gave me? So the value of the item matters. If I were just to put leaves in there see how little it moved if i put uh if i put gold ore in there i mean good chunk gave how about these copper bars i got 64 copper bars look how much that that gave me 
So what that does is it pays your taxes. And then what this does is this slowly ticks down over time. I guess it's per 30 minutes. It will start to tick down. The more shrines you have down, the more that's compounded, meaning that the burn rate is, fa is, is, is double. So basically, you got two shrines, the burn rate's double. You got four shrines, the burn rate's double. So you basically will be feeding your shrines some some uber materials to keep them fully fed. I'm gonna dump. So so you basically just feed it, and this way, when you go AFK, you know that your building's not going to be destroyed by the environment. Because what happens is, if this hits zero, I know there'll probably be a grace period. Uh, of time where the building um, won't take damage. But if it hits zero and the claim's not paid, the building will start taking damage just from the environment and to a point where the building will eventually disappear altogether and everything in it disappears too. It gets destroyed by the world. So that's why you have to pay your land claim. So the taxes actually end up going, to, everything you put in this little feeder ends up going to the king of the of the uh, of the castle and the castle's up behind that mountain. So one person is king of Riven World, and when he's king, he gets all the taxes that you feed into this thing. So the bigger you make your footprint, the more taxes you'll be giving to the king, and that's how it works. And it just happens to be the tax rates at sixty right now because I'm just playing around with it uh, at this point. So just keep all of what I just said in mind. Now, let's go look at the, the corner blocks and the stairs, and then we'll call it a video. They have these nice um, half blocks that you can make, so if you don't want your walls to look blocky, you use the middle mouse button to rotate them, and then place them down. So this way you can have thinner walls. You can do a lot of neat things with uh, these walls. See this gap right there? It's because of this is a ha basically a half block. And what you got to do is you got to place that there. And then it should allow you, it takes an extra block if you rotate it right. We can rotate it in there to, to, to make that gap. And the reason why that gap is there is because it's a double block that you put, you're putting it on a double block. So there's just it, it takes a little bit more materials to, to to bridge those little gaps that are created in the build, but it, like this has got the gap on it because see that gap right there because it's those half blocks is on a full block and you just make the gap with putting another half block in there. So there's how the half blocks work and you need the half blocks also for ingredients when you go to make something. So under the five key, we have the triangle one. So you can make your corners look, well, I mean, you normally, they would look triangled if you put a normal block, if you put a normal block there. But, it, but what's nice, I'm gonna get rid of these half blocks here so that we can look at, I'm just gonna get rid of, and I gotta get rid of that one. Oh, and that one. So what's nice is, is by doing it this way, on the inside, you got more room because it's a, it's, a, it's a corner piece. Or you can do it kind of fancy by just turning it around and having your outer edges of your building look shaved off. And you do that all the way up if that's what you want to do. So I, if I were to put a uh, half block in there, just line it up correctly, put a half block there, and then I could put a half block here see how nice that looks so if you're building a build bigger structure you could shave off the corners of the structure if that's what you want to do as for the stairs those are pretty basic they they're easy to line up just line them up and uh and they click on there and i can whoop so and because of the half block i could just place that one under the half block what the game doesn't allow you to do is continue the stairs without a block to support it. But don't fear. I'm going to just for uh, the sake of making this easy, I'm going to, I'm going to take the, one of the square blocks out of the ground here. Oh, I guess I didn't need that. Uh, 
I'm not going to use the half box anymore. So uh, I guess I'll put that uh, that one uh, it was under the four. Okay, I'll put that one back. I thought I was going to need it. So what you're going to need to do is put a block in first and then hit, hit your stairs again, go up your stairs, and then put your stair in. And now you no longer need that block. So you can uh, use the hammer to get rid of the block. Then use your block to do the next one. And then uh, put your stairs in. See how easy that is? Now you can leave the blocks. If you like the looks of the blocks, it is kind of neat if you do the color difference, see the difference in color. But if you don't want to spend the if you don't want to spend the blocks, see how I uh, um, I pretty much hid that shrine underneath the stairs there. So that's another way if you if you hide your hide your um, shrine underneath the stairs, people won't see it there. It does give a little glow, so you have to keep an eye on that if people can see it through the glow. But that's really it. That's the basic building building of this game let's just look at the mason table real quick because these are other building components you can make it did just more fancier they're more sturdy like the stone being um you know tougher than the, the wood but within the stone category you got stone brick um so you need stone brick blocks okay these okay so the stone brick blocks are made by okay so you need you need stone brick, so that's, uh, let me see here, stairs, stone ramp, okay, stone battlement, you just, oh, these are the, these are the ones that the woods, ha the wood had, if you have the, the wood components had these two, where you spend more um, bricks to, to make the corner pieces or the battlement pieces, this one's two, Sa same number that the wood blocks needed, to make their counterparts it's just you need stone to do it here so yeah you'll be able to make uh these are the normal stone bricks i just don't have any stone in my inventory uh so you'll be able to make all these and now this stone brick battle mint would have more hit points than the stone and i'm not really sure what the clay blocks are going to be used for the plaster blocks but that's how the tier system works now the other thing is you can make uh, iron um, blocks too using the forge so that's the next tier if you don't want to use wood stone or the better stone you can actually go collect iron and then you make those into iron bars and those iron bars become iron blocks and you can make your whole base out of iron blocks which will have the highest hit point value so they will be able to take quite a bit of hit points so the game offers you quite a bit of options now it's in beta still I imagine those options are going to grow over time. And as players play the game, they're going to probably suggest, why don't we have this? Why don't we add that? Why don't we try to work on this? You know, there's always um, some stuff that they can add to a game like this, especially a building game. And, and, and what's nice, too, is if you look at the bench again, you can make tables and chairs right now. You can make a wooden bed. You can make oil lamps. So they get the they get the understanding that you know you're gonna want furniture to be placed in your home, and there's gonna be a lot of people that play this game for the deco, the deco in the building, and they're not gonna be in it for the PvP aspect or the survival. Well, they're gonna be in it for the survival because you're still gonna have to drink, eat, and whatnot. But they'll probably play a support role or a crafting role and be be a uh, a base builder. And they just want to do the deco and make it look cool. And there's going to be players that are like that. So I imagine this game will branch out with more assets. That's what I call them to, to be able to build your structures in this game. Well, I hope this uh, video was helpful to you. It was kind of enjoyable to make. Well, thank you for joining me. This has been the Tarkus Zone.